as the decade of the 80s rolls to an end. The names and faces of several PBA members stand out for the excitement they have provided their fans and the attention they have brought to their sport. The growing popularity and success of bowling is in a large part attributed to these gifted professional stars. Their past feats will continue to live in our memories. Today, the Professional Bowlers Association closes the door on the 89 national season with five faces that should provide many a thrill for the decade to come. It's the PBA Tour on NBC. and welcome to the Touring Players Championship. Hello, everybody. I'm Jay Randolph, and alongside Hall of Famer Earl Anthony. Earl, first of all, let's talk about the field. It's a very fine field for the $27,000 first prize. It is, Jay, and it's, uh, it's a very experienced field. The 56-game format brings out the cream of the crop, you might say, to the top. The Touring Players Championship, even though it's not called a major, in the players' minds, it is, because as you know, the winner gets three years in the Firestone Tournament Champion. So to the players' minds, this is a big tournament. Expecting good scores? I expect good scores. It's an outside shot. The players should carry a lot of the light hits. I expect good scores. The first match, we've got a couple of dandy veterans for you. Guppy Troop and Tom Baker. And here we go. A $150,000 Budweiser Touring Players Championship. Glorious Guppy Troop in from Florida. A little high. Tough start for Guppy. 5'8", 175 pounds. A vision in red today, Earl. <laughs> he sure is, Jay. Uh, Guppy, you know, as you know, Jay, hasn't been on the telecast for over a year. He's been struggling. Uh, he's actually got off the tour for a little while. And a close friend of his gave him some help with his game, and it made a big difference. That's why he made the telecast. A, a young man named Bill Calhoun in Daytona Beach, where Guppy uh, went for some help, got him back on the right track. Guppy is open in the first frame. Here is steady Tom Baker from Buffalo, New York. Oh, he got a break. He did get a break. Uh, it wasn't unusual to see the 457 standing this week, Jay, as you get a look at a little profile of Tom Baker there. 13 years on tour. His second championship round appearance of this year. Earlier, he finished second at the Kessler Open in Dublin, California. And he converts the five pin has an early lead. 31 titles among the five finalists here. This is our fifth year at the Taylor Lanes. And always, Earl, uh, we have a crowd that really gets into it here. Another one of the great bowling towns. When you're in the Detroit area, you can expect a lot of people to come to the bowling tournament. Uh, Jay, this, this young man right here, Tom Baker, has had wrist injuries. He's had a lot of problems over the years. And he's got a very unique release. The only one on the tour, I think, that is, 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 can be as successful as he is because he combines two difficult things. He throws a spinner, and he also is incredibly accurate in spite of throwing a spinner. Troop now on lane 40. Got be with another problem, but uh, he only has the five pin down there. Here's a good look at Guppy's form. The five pin will be an easy spare. This is a reshow. We'll just run this back to get a look at his style. Guppy is a very accurate player also, and what he tries to do is basically not get a lot on the ball, but keep it in play. He's uh, the kind of guy that wants to keep the ball in the pocket every shot and hope that he makes his spares because uh, he's not going to overpower the pins like, uh, say, a Brian Voss or someone of that caliber. Hasn't won in four years. Guppy out of Daytona Beach, Florida. High game of 278 here this week. Oh boy, the 10 pin is standing. Guppy's shaking his head. Dave Ferraro won here last year. 
Brian Boss, who you'll see a bit later on, finished fourth here in 88. Duffy using that green ball. I'm not sure if he's using it because it goes so straight he can make his spares or because he likes the color, Jay. What do you think? <laughs> it looks like a, like a line jawbreaker. Baker with a 12-pin lead. leaves the 10 pin second championship round appearance of the year mentioned he finished fourth at the greater Hartford Open in 87 Jay there's two ways the players the top players will make the 10 pin one they'll always stand on the left hand side of the approach and go cross lane but they'll either throw it hard and straight with nothing on it or they'll spin it like Tom Baker a complete overspin if the ball is spinning it will hit He's up by a dozen here in the early going. Budweiser sponsoring four events on the PBA Tour in 1989. Boy, the Pro-Ams here were a tremendous success. They had nearly 2,000 entries in the Pro-Ams. That's amazing. It's amazing the support that bowling gets all throughout the Detroit area. Baker with the most consecutive 200 games here this week, 14 in a row. And he's got a split problem right here. 4-9. 4-9. The ball just hits so hard, Jay. Uh, as I mentioned, Tom spins the ball, and he's uh, incredibly accurate for that type of release. Keeps the ball in the pocket area. This one just gripped the lane and cut through, leaving the 4-9. He'll go cross lane at this and try to just get enough of the 4-pin to slide it into the 9. Well, Baker has his first open frame, and all of a sudden, he is down by one pin to Guppy Troop. This is the PBA Fall Tour, and today it's being brought to you by Budweiser. Beats with age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. By today's Chevrolet, who invites you to see why nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. By Sinex Ultra Fine Mist, the nasal spray that goes up and stays up. And by Brunswick, proud sponsor of Team USA. It began as a game. It turned into a battle. And now, it's out of control. January 28th. This time, it's war. Now, at a pro shop near you, Brunswick is delivering a 100% uh -huh. urethane monster. What? We're delivering the power of a rhino. <laughs> the hardest charging ball in America. Five distinct formulations. Brunswick's Rhino reigns. Uh, janitor, to the pro shop, please. Welcome to Lumina Sedan. It has been designed with care for you and yours. With rear doors that open wide, plenty of room for the family to enjoy. And even Scotch Guard fabric protector comes standard. The family Lumina Sedan. When it comes to new ideas, nobody's winning life. Right. The scoreboard in match one has Troop up by one pin as he gets set to bowl in the fourth frame. And Guppy, as always, colorfully clad here today. I really remember that pair of pants he had one color on one leg and one color on the other leg. That's right. Years. He didn't know if he was coming or going there, Jay. <laughs> and the guppies on top of his shoes. Isn't color television wonderful? Yes, it is. <laughs> and a 10-pin for Guppy. You know, uh, he got the name Guppy uh, when he was a, a kid uh, bowling in the juniors. And, uh, the teams were all named after fish. <laughs> his team was the guppies. And it's stuck. There's that green ball again that he's using on the space shooting. 
That was a pretty good look at Guppy's form there. We showed Jay where he how he gets to the foul line and uh, he tends to be very balanced, very accurate and consistent with his ball speed. And that's why he's here this week. He's just a real solid fundamental player because he's using the two different balls. He's going very quickly on us. <laughs> yes, he is. Match dead even at this point. And a seven pin over on lane 39. Here's a good look at Guppy's follow through. Watch the rotation of the ball that grips the lane right there. Turns into the five will go in front of the seven. Just not quite enough power on that ball to carry it. Oh, boy, he just got there. Oh, look at him. Wow. <laughs> Baker now up by one. He bowls in the fifth frame on lane 40. And down they go. Baker, a high game of 255. Average 225 on the TV pair. This is a good look at Tom Baker's form now. Watch what he does at the bottom. See how he rotates around the ball. His whole arm, including his wrist, everything, goes around the side of the ball before he lifts up the side. And that's what you call a spinner. And what that'll do on this, now this is a live shot. Watch how far down the lane the ball goes before it grips the lane. That's because it's spinning. Way down the lane. So, Baker comes up with two in a row in frames five and six, and he's got an 11-pin lead. Here's a good look at him. Watch him rotate. See that big rotation around the ball? You can actually see the ball rotating sideways. Carries the team. And Troop has got a problem. The 8-10. Well, remember last frame, he left the seven pin and the ball didn't really hit very hard, not quite hard enough to get the five to take out the seven. Here it hits even weaker and leaves the eight ten. So definitely having some problems with his release. And not quite getting the rotation on the ball he needs to carry the corner pins and obviously to get out that pocket split. You mentioned he gave up touring full time earlier this summer. Only bowled in some selected events. Won his first title in 78 in Battle Creek, Michigan. really having some problems he's here. struggling hey, Jay I think uh, you know I'm watching Guppy practice before we went on the air he was making good shots but he was playing farther out of the lane out around the first arrow, the first uh, five boards in the lane now he's he's moved in he's not getting the reaction he's looking for we'll be back with more action from the hundred fifty thousand dollar Budweiser touring players championship in just a moment if you'll have a house as messy as this and the sun is <laughs> helpful as this. Get a shop vac. Look at the power this baby's got. A shop vac wet dry picks up everything from nails and wood chips to broken glass to gallons of water. Thanks for the car, Dad. Yep, there's no telling when you'll need the power of a shop vac. Now, shop vac introduces spot check for tough carpet stains. Spot check turns any shop vac into a powerful carpet cleaner. Hey, Eddie, can you bring your lunch? This is junior high. You don't bring your lunch. You buy your lunch. Yeah, I knew that. Do you want an apple juice? This is junior high. You don't drink apple juice. You drink orange juice. Yeah, right. Orange juice. It's got the vitamins, minerals, and taste that make you feel so good. Hey, Eddie, you shouldn't serve your orange juice. Why not? Because this is junior high. 100% pure, Florida quality orange juice. It makes you feel so good. Life's full of simple pleasures, like the comfort of Levi's jeans, or had you forgotten? Baker in the lead by 24 in this opening match of the Touring Players Championship at the Taylor Lanes. Baker, 35 years old. 
Won more than $40,000 this year on tour. And, oh, he got a break again. <laughs> he had it again, Jay, the 4-5 split. He'd asked for a re-rack there. There's his missus. Mm, and it's nervous. nice to see her, Lisa Baker. He's got a new hairdo. It's a good chance for Tom to use the five pin for a lineup shot. Get an idea of just what the ball would do if he tries a little different release or a little different angle. Something unique about Tom Baker's game that you won't see hardly any of the professionals doing, and that is he puts his thumb in the ball first. This is a good look at his style. A good height from the arm swing, just about shoulder high. Excellent balance and follow through. But he'll put his thumb in first, and then his fingers, where is almost every top player always puts his fingers in first then his thumb this helps him spin the ball which is what he likes to do is get a lot of spin on the ball a little high and he's got a split problem here six seven ten for Baker in the eighth frame both of these fellows having their hands full you know what happens with a spinner uh, is that once if the speed is off just a little, if it's a little hard or a little soft, the ball either grips the lane and jumps or it slides right by. So it's very important that you never change the speed on the ball if you're throwing a spinner. Oh, what a shot. Oh. Excellent try by Baker. He is open for the second time in the match. Here's a good look at it, Jay. Watch how close he comes to picking up this, this, this split, the 6-7-10. Troop attacking on lane 40 and a big strike for Guppy. All right, now there, remember what I mentioned a few frames ago that in practice he was playing out near the first arrow. Uh, now, and then he, uh, when we went on the air, he moved in around between the second and third arrow. I didn't understand that. That ball, he moved back out to the first arrow, got the strike. Let's see if he stays outside with this one, Jay. Here we go. out there and that one didn't get up didn't get up and he is confused he was off balance with that shot a little bit too jay didn't quite get through it the way he'd like to tough split 210 he's going to try to slide the two pin into the 10. pulling very quickly and another open frame for troop a lead of 21 for baker This, the Touring Players Championship, as we mentioned, it's a three-year exemption into the Firestone Tournament of Champions for the winner. So the lane condition for the Touring Players is more difficult than a normal lane condition. That's why you see what you see down there, Jay. A lot of the splits, the pins, uh, the pin decks are, and there's oil on them. The ball isn't hitting very hard. It's deflecting. Earl, this looked like a pretty decent hit, but nothing happened. Watch the ball bounce off the head pin. Instead of cutting through and driving through to carry the five pin out, watch it see it, how it deflects. And that's why he left the A-10. Baker's lead is 10. This, is a, this isn't a, a game of attacking right now. It's a matter of survival. It looks like whoever can survive the 10th frame with a mark is going to win the match. Baker brings them all home just barely. Well, that was a big that was a big strike for him, Jay, because with another strike he can lock up the match. Here's a good look at it. Watch the five pin just enough to get the five pin to go out and take it seven. See if this tilt over and the neck of it nudges out the seven. With a strike here, he wins the match. With a spare, Guppy can still strike out and tie. So this first strike and very important. This one even more so. We could have a tie. Yes, we could. Had a roll off last week in Milwaukee. And Guppy sitting there saying, if I had just made a couple of better shots, this would have been my match. Tom's thinking the same thing. <laughs> just a couple of breaks at the right time. 
Must make the 10th in. All right. 171 for Baker. Guppy up very quickly. He needs three strikes to tie. It's the best ball he's thrown, Jay. Yes, indeed. He's still in it. You can see the frustration on Guppy's face. This is a look at that ball. Now watch it. It won't deflect like Tom's did. Cut through, got the five and the, and the eight. The frustration is because he just couldn't figure out where to play. He has to have the strike. Oh, my. Well, he leaves the 10-10, and uh, as always, a very popular performer. This uh, crowd uh, always enjoys seeing Guppy when he comes out. It's going to be Baker, 171. Troop, 161. Troop qualifying in the fifth position will finish fifth and win $6,000. And Baker, of course, will move on into the second match of the afternoon. And Tom Baker will meet the reigning PBA Player of the Year, Brian Foss, when we come back. The Indianapolis Motor Speedway and Chevy does what's never been done before. Not with a race car, not even a car, but with a new full-size Chevy sport truck. Chevy averages over 100 miles an hour for 24 straight hours at Indy to win the prestigious Holman Indy Challenge Trophy. Chevrolet, so far ahead, even our trucks are winning at Indy. Nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. Today's truck is Chevrolet. She's all ours. about some customers. Ladies night. Great place, guys. Who did your decorating? Users of ordinary nasal sprays will do almost anything to keep the spray up in their nose where it can work. Ordered Morgan. Which is why so many people now use Sinex Ultra Fine Mist. It's twice as fine as ordinary sprays, so its medicine goes up and stays up to give you the best relief possible. You don't have to stand on your head to get relief. Just get Sinex Ultra Fine Mist. Tom Baker has scratched his way to victory over Guppy Troop in the first match. Let's remind you that NBC's bowling season will continue next week. Our coverage of the bowling shootout this year, an exciting new twist. Mark Roth, Marshall Holman, Lisa Wagner, they'll be joined by a non-professional, the survivor of a nationwide competition, the challenge for the $100,000 in prize money next Saturday on NBC Sports World. And of course, tomorrow, NFL action, a double dip for you tomorrow. All of that uh, will be preceded, of course, by the NFL action, the Browns hosting Cincinnati, and then in the second game of the doubleheader, many of you see the Broncos and uh, Los Angeles Raiders. There's regional action, so you want to check your local listings. Costas will keep you updated on all the late-breaking stories. OJ examines pigskin paranoia in the Buckeye State. The insiders Bobby Beathard and Ralph Wiley will provide their unique analysis. They look like dolls there, don't they, Earl? Huh? They're a great group, though. That's tomorrow on NBC. The NFL Live, followed by regional action. Brian Voss on the left. Tom Baker set to start this second match. Fourth place finisher receives $7,000. it off in fine fashion and now here is Voss he was 9 and 15 in match play had a high game of 256 this week 204.5 on the TV pair Touring golf professional Payne Stewart wears shirts doing the competition with the logo of the area's NFL team. Here he is in action. It's a good look at what, how the game should be played. 
right there. If you ever wanted to copy a style, a classic example of how to really get to the foul line the right way, this is the guy to copy. And it won't go. The five pin stayed up for him. Boss wearing that silver and Honolulu blue of the Detroit Lions today. Here's a good look at that style I'm talking about. Watch the arm swing just above shoulder high, then good knee bend, the perfect balance, and the long follow through, the arm going straight up to the ceiling, out over the target. All the right fundamentals at the five pin. Boss and Baker in this second match. Made three television finals in 85. He really got hot. Finished second here. They used the 10 pin. And uh, also in 85, he had a very good run in the Brunswick World Open, Glendale Heights, Illinois. In a three-week span, he then won the Budweiser Classic in Columbus, Ohio the following week after that. Well, that was a real good run for him. Remember in 85? Oh, yes. I remember very well. He had a great fall. I was talking to Tom a little earlier about his style, the way he releases the ball, how he puts his hand in the ball, which, as I mentioned earlier, is so unique thumb in first, then the fingers. He actually screws his thumb in almost. You can watch him when he puts his hand in the ball here. Now watch. See how the thumb is? He'll wiggle it back and forth. Get that thumb in there the way he wants it. He locks the thumb in, and that makes it easier to spin the ball. And he's had problems with bowling 56 games this week. His hand is swollen. That makes it even more difficult to get his hand in the right way. A strike over on 39. Watch the release. Watch the arm go around the side and then lift up the ball. Uh, as opposed to the release, there's the perfect 10 pins in the pit by Tom. Here, watch Brian Boss now. Straight up the back of the ball, a heavy roll as opposed to the spin. Boss, 118,000 plus this year, career earnings of over 700,000. And there's a good look at what I consider the best player in the world right now, Jay. And again, the heavy roll, both styles are effective. Tom Baker with the spinner, Brian Voss with the heavy roll. Baker's style, just much more difficult to perfect and be consistent with. Voss stays in great shape. He's a jogger and uh, really a great, great athlete. And another strike. Ten pin lead for Voss. Brian living now in Boca Raton, Florida. We'll be back with more action from Taylor, Michigan, right after we take this time out. Hey, come here. Closer. Don't see any dandruff, do you? I used to have it. Boy, did I ever. So I tried head and shoulders. Then I tried my wife's Selsun Blue. She was right. Blue is better. Blue is better. Selsun Blue. Test shows Selsun Blue relieves dandruff flaking better than head and shoulders. And doctors recommend it number one. More than head and shoulders, Denorex, and Tegrin combined. For me, there's no doubt about it. Blue is better. Selsun Blue. Normal, extra medicated, and extra conditioning formulas. Over the years, bowling ball manufacturers have promised that their balls will do all kinds of tricks to improve your score. AMF, we know nothing helps like power. That's why our new Cobra has a computer-designed strike coil weight block and 71% more urethane. So get a Cobra for striking power you can rely on. Instead of tricks, you can't. A legend has been created. Not just another battery, but a better battery for the future. Better in reserve power, with up to two hours and 25 minutes in reserve for those critical times, like when you leave your lights on. Better in price, with a winter sale going on now when you need it most. Better in availability, since it's now at over 20,000 Napa outlets. On sale through December, the Napa legend, the better battery. 
Afternoon, Jerry Tarkanian and the Running Rebels of UNLV battle Billy Tubbs and the Oklahoma Sooners. The season premiere of college basketball next Saturday on NBC. Bill and Adeline and Alan DeBiase. The prominent attorney, Bill, here in Detroit. His wife, Adeline, proprietor of the Taylor Lanes, and the son, Alan, the general manager here. Great people. They really are wonderful hosts. Here's Brian Boss going for four strikes in a row, and he gets it in the sixth frame. The strike for Boss after striking in the fifth. Here's a good look at that style again, Jay. The real hard lift up on the side of the ball to get that heavy roll. The carry and watch Brian. He's gone. He's out of screen. He's running. Tom Baker down by 21. And he strikes back on lane 40. Both players bowling extremely well. Both players could have had all strikes at this point. We could have two six-baggers going right now, Jay. Brian left the five pin on the second frame. Tom left the uh, the seven pin on a great hit in the in the fifth frame and uh, on a, another good shot in the uh, second. He left the ten pin. So both players could have had all strikes at this point. This is what I expected. This kind of scoring, not what we got in the first match. And the strike in the seventh for Baker. Fine, fine bowling from Baker and Voss right now. And we'll rejoin this match right after this from your local station. On our next A Current Affair, topless eye test. On the at five on Channel 3. Hi, the voice's wife for Atlantic Transmission. Atlantic has a special transmission tune-up for most domestic and imported cars. We will road test your car, inspect the transmission, remove the pan, clean the pan and screen, adjust the linkage, replace the pan gasket, and refill with new fluid. All for just $8.95. You save up to $10. For this special, see your nearest Atlantic Transmission Center. Atlantic Transmission, it's automatic. This holiday, Macro members have what everyone is looking for. Top name brands at the best prices. Save on GE products. This deluxe cordless phone, only $79.99. A complete telephone system, $119.90. Daisy's Thermo Spa eases holiday tensions. Cordless and rechargeable, $78.83. Men's or women's Coleman hiking boots, $35. Or men's Wolverines, $55. You'll find holiday magic with the best prices at Macro. We're here for you. This holiday season, give the Philadelphia Eagles to your favorite football fan with a subscription to Eagles Digest. The official publication of the Philadelphia Eagles offers game stories, player features, action facts, photos, and a weekly column by Coach Buddy Ryan. Published 26 times a year, weekly from August through January, plus special off-season issues, Eagles Digest can be yours for only $27.95. Make it the perfect holiday gift. We'll even include a gift card. Call today, 1-800-334-4005. That's 1-800-334-4005. Are celebrities paying for fame with their children's lives? Monday on Evening Magazine. College basketball back on NBC Sports next Saturday at 2 Eastern time. UNLV's running Rebels will take the road to go against Oklahoma Sooners in Norman, Oklahoma. And how about Oklahoma? 97 points and a half the other evening in uh, a game that... Uh, they played against U.S. International. There's Andrea Go, the fiancé of Brian Voss. They're going to be married in mid-February. She's here to root her guy on. And Voss right now with an 11-pin lead. He's got the four-bagger. Set in the seventh frame. Lane 40. Ten-pin. He had a good run there. He did have a good run. He's made a good shot in every frame. This is the worst shot he's made in the match up to this point where he leaves the flat 10. And the reason being, you could hear the ball hit the lane, Jay. It's kind of hung up a little bit on his hand. Didn't come off clean. Watch the deflection on the ball, and the pin will lay in the channel. That's what they call the flat 10, the weak 10. Brian had some injuries uh, earlier in the fall, Jay. He actually uh, he didn't want people to realize this, but he missed the Rochester event because of a shoulder, shoulder injury, and uh, he had to have some therapy on that. And fortunately, we had the Breeders' Cup, so they had a week off. 
That gave him time to get back in shape, and he feels like he's bowling very well again. He's earned paychecks in 11 of the last 12 events that he has bowled. And a strike. He has a 10-pin lead. As opposed to the 10, when, when he left the 10 pin, watch this ball. It will not deflect. It runs right over the 8 and the 9 pin almost. So that's the difference. That's why no 10 pin on this shot. And there's the reaction of Brian Ross. When he knows he's throwing the ball well, he expects to strike. Baker got a re-rack here in the 8th. And 10 pin stays up for him. And Tom not happy at all with lane 40, and not with the ball reaction so much. He's, uh, he's, he feels he's rolling the ball well, but he's just not getting the corner pins to fall. He's almost had the 4-5 split a couple times on this lane. Uh, he had the 8-10 in his match against Guppy Troop on this lane, and now he's left the weak 10. Both players feel that the pins are slightly off spot on lane 40, and it's tough to carry the corner pin. Got a hook. Makes me nervous, Jay, watching him spin that ball across there. Baker was in 20th place after five rounds, vaulted up to seventh, and then got to fourth last evening here. Here's a look at that last spare shooting cross lane at the 10 pin. You can see the ball rotating sideways, spinning. And right on the end, about three feet in front of the 10 pin, it gripped the lane and hooked just enough to cover it. Makes my heart pitter-patter a little watching him do that. and Boss. Fine match here. Strike for Baker in the ninth. Watch this ball grip the lane. Goes way down the lane, and that's what he's trying to do. He gets as far down the lane as he can before it grips the lane. You see the five pin take out the seven. That's when it's gripped the lane at the proper point. Enter the pins to strike. Oh, Boss is really on target. He wants to win very badly, Jay. He felt uh, he's been bowling very well. He felt he had a chance to win last week. Let it get away from him. This week, he's very aggressive. He came to play. He wants this badly. David Ozio got the job done in Milwaukee. As we look again at Boss's fiance. That is power. <laughs> Let me tell you, this is power, folks. <laughs> you talk about a ball gripping the lane and making the pins dance. Watch what happens to the five pin here. Boom, over against the wall, into the seven. Four pins took out the seven pin. Just a teeny bit high, but enough. Uh, he's gonna win it. He's got enough, you're right, Jay. And what a good match it was. Possible 238 for Tom Baker with the spare here. Brian Voss, a score of 248. You know, Baker never gave up hope this week despite a slow start. The field of 100, Baker was 95th after the first round. And he climbed only to 78th after the second round. And as I mentioned, he was still in 20th place after five rounds. So it was a fine finish for Baker, who's going to pull down $7,000 for finishing fourth here in this $150,000 Budweiser Touring Players Championship. And Tom's smiling and talking to one of the people that work for the PBA, uh, who's a friend of his, saying, uh, you know, that's what I should have done a couple of frames ago. I made a little move, got the strike, and it's always too late. You know, you always do that when it's too late to make a difference. There it is. <laughs> what we've been expecting, and so has Tom throughout the match, that 4-5, it finally stood up. There's the way the prize money will be passed out here. First prize worth $27,000, and Baker pulling down, as we told you, that $7,000 fourth prize. The final score, Brian Voss at 248, and Tom Baker at 225. 
So Voss will be going up against Bob Handley. Our third match of the afternoon is coming up in just a moment. Holiday greetings from Budweiser. Budweiser wish you and yours the very best of everything this holiday season. This is something different. The body panels will never rest. The seats can be arranged to seat up to seven. And ask yourself, have you ever traveled like this before? Meet the new Family Lumina APV. When it comes to new ideas for the family, Nobody's winning like. The heartbeat of America. It's today's Chevrolet. Stuffing. Mr. Scrooge loves the new stuffing and the five-piece holiday meal deal from Kentucky Fried Chicken. Stuffing. With five pieces of the Colonel's chicken and two buttermilk biscuits, all for only $4.99. Perfect for the two of us. Heavens, it's the crutches. Hide the stuffing. We brought the ten-piece holiday meal. With four biscuits. And more stuffing. Just $9.99. I like the way you think, Cratchit. Get the five or ten-piece holiday meal deal at Kentucky Fried Chicken. The Bengals. The Browns. And the Dog Pound. Football doubleheader Sunday. NBC Sports serves your need to know all week long. Dial 1 900 454 3500 for NBC Scores Plus. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, anywhere in the USA. Since this is the last regularly scheduled tournament of the year for the players, we thought you, we'd bring you up to date on the statistics, what's happened, who the leaders are throughout the year in various categories. Each tournament, there is a field of 160 players. The idea is to at least break even, in other words, cash, get in the top 53, and hopefully continue on the next step to the top 24 finishers. And here's a good idea of how they've done this year. Amleto Monticelli, today's tournament leader, has made 17 appearances in the top 24 out of 26 events entered, which is an outstanding statistic. Uh, Dave Husted, of course, has bowled 31 events and, and been in the top 24 17 times also. But as you go down the line, something that's interesting is Brian Voss and Pete Weber have only entered 21 and 22 tournaments respectively, and they've made the top 24 15 times. So if you were to continue that on, you might see that they would be the leaders in the top 24 if they had bowled in as many events, uh, say, as Dave Husted has at 31. And when you get past that point, obviously, the next step is to get into the top five. And here again, Amleto Monticelli is the leader in 26 events entered. He's been in the top five ten times, which is an outstanding statistic. Again, Mike Albee, that, who is currently the leading money winner on the tour with earnings of approaching $300,000, as you can see here, has only made eight top 24 finishes, but he has made the most of those. And Monticelli, today's tournament leader, if he should win, would go by Del Ballard Jr. into second place on the current money list. Uh, something else that's kind of interesting, going back 10 years, uh, Mark Roth was the leading money winner with $124,000 as compared to Mike Albee's almost 300 today. And going back even farther, 20 years ago, a Hall of Famer, Billy Hardwick, was the leading money winner with earnings of $64,000. So you can see the money has improved, and what we're looking for is continued improvement in the money available to the players, the greatest bowlers in the world. the winner over Baker 248 to 225 in the second match of this players championship don't forget tomorrow the battle of Ohio the Browns and the Bengals and the second game of the doubleheader many of you see the Broncos and the Raiders there's regional action and of course it all starts with NFL live Bob Costas and the crew at 1230 Eastern time 
They are a good-looking crew, Jerry. Yeah, they are. Bob Hanley and Brian Voss are two fine-looking gentlemen, too. And we're set to go. The third prize worth $8,500. Well, we'll see if Brian can continue with that intensity. Starts it off with a strike. This week's championship round almost looks like a replay of last week. A rare occurrence. Three of last week's finalists back here this week. Monticelli qualifying number one. And, of course, now Voss and Bob Hanley in action head-to-head. -head. Hanley had a tough week last week, as mm. you know, Jay, that 162 game. And then lost, he was fortunate to tie with that, then lost the roll-off, where he missed a couple of easy spares in the, uh, in the, in the match to, to, uh, to create the tie with Dave Ozio, and then came back and missed an easy spare in the roll-off. Out of Pompano Beach, Florida these days, uh, used to be a teacher in his home state of Kansas, and uh, he readily admitted to us last week that he choked. He was, was nervous. His first and appearance in a long time. Yes, and uh, it's not unusual, even for a very experienced player, to get nervous. Uh, if he could get by this first game, if he were to beat Brian Voss, he'd be very difficult to beat in the next game. Just getting yeah, he's happy left. about getting left. Yes, sir. He's happy to get that spare, wasn't that's he? That's it. That four pin. That's what he missed last week, and uh, that's what cost him really a chance to go on to the to the championship match. Here's a look at stalking Bob Hanley. What they mean by that is he he goes to the foul line in a very unique way. You can see how straight his sliding leg is. He's sideways at the foul line. That's because he uses all that strength he has in his upper body to pull the ball through, which turns his whole body sideways. He stalks to the foul line one step at a time, almost like he's sneaking up on the pins. There's the power. Watch this. Wow, down it goes. Certainly one of the top ten as far as power on a bowling ball, Bob Hanley can get as much as any of the top ten players. And this is an idea of what happens to the head pin as it comes across the lane just enough to get the ten pin. Our boss is some kind of on target today. No one does it better than this man, Jay. That's my opinion, obviously, but uh, there are only a couple of players right now, I think, approach his ability, and that would be, of course, Pete Weber and Mike Albee on the left side. Pete Weber, uh, another right-hander. But those three players right now uh, would be a great top five to have Mark Roth and Marshall Holman tossed in there for a pretty nice Monday night five-man team, wouldn't it? I want to tell you. Another one. Your opinion is valued by all of us who love bowling, too. Earl Anthony and Jay Randolph with you as we look at... Look Brian at the concentration, Boss. Jay, on his face. His head is steady. His eyes never leave the target. Doesn't even blink. Gotta hurry. The seven did go down for him. Hanley was in real trouble there for a second. He was. This ball got away from him, Jay. It went way to the right, much farther outside than he wanted it to, near the channel. Barely got back to the head pin. Now watch what happens. You can see the ball's almost near the channel. Watch what happens to the head pin. It goes off the wall, takes out everything but the seven. It's the last pin to go. Could have been a strike. He was lucky. No 7-10. Hard and straight the opposite of Tom Baker. Remember the spinner that Tom Baker threw at the 10th pin? Here's a guy that overpowers the lane, just throws it right at it so hard that it can't grip the lane, won't hook away. Here he is, cross lane again at that 10th pin. You can see he puts everything he's got into it, uh, actually get the ball down the lane so quickly it cannot get friction or grip the lane. Hanley down by 20. This tournament concludes the national tour next week, December 4th through the 7th. Top 24 players on the 89-point list will be in action as Hanley leaves the four-pin. Uh, the tournament uh, next week at the Valley Lanes out in Reno, Nevada. $200,000 Cambridge Mixed Doubles along with the Ladies Professional Bowlers Tour, top 24. And a uh, chance on that occasion for... Mike Albee to still get to the $300,000 mark. 
Albee picked up a check here this week. He's about 3,700 away from the $300,000 barrier. And Hanley picking up the spare. Down 21 to Brian Voss. And this is the third match of the afternoon. The Touring Players Championship coming to you from Taylor Lanes in Taylor, Michigan. Chevy S10 four-wheel drive pickups take on the four-wheel drive Ford Ranger in off-road power. Chevy charges ahead with the biggest standard engine in its class, the 4.3-liter Vortec V6. Two more cylinders than Ford's standard engine, two more liters than Ford, and 60 more horsepower than Ford. Sure, Chevy has an unfair advantage, but Chevy S10 drivers have known that all along. Nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. The Vector Series, a revolutionary new concept. The Vector, for the person seeking pro roll and increased bin carry, the secret lies within. In traditional balls, the weight block is toward the outer surface. In the Vector 1, it's closer to the heart of the ball. In the Vector 2, next to the heart. The revolution is increased, giving you maximum striking power. The Vector Series, from Columbia 300, sold only in Lens and Pro Shops. from all of us at Angelsoft and Georgia Pacific. Xerox presents the Great American Torture Test. We challenge the bone-numbing cold of northern Alaska and pass with flying colors. Xerox, because extreme conditions demand extreme protection. Charlie Hodges, the Budweiser Pro Sports Marketing Coordinator, here with us from St. Louis. Good to have him on hand for this Budweiser Touring Players Championship. As Brian Voss has a 21-pin lead. Voss, three in a row, set in the fourth frame now, and he's on lane 40. gets the kind of break that you need to have if you're going to be a winner. He made a great shot, had the ball rolling the way he wanted it to roll, but he got a little bit wide of his target. It came back just enough to get the late 10, which they call a little love tap. The pin lays on the 10 pin, and that keeps his string alive. Four in a row, now up on the left-hand lane, lane 39. Now this man who came out of the Northwest, lives down in Boca Raton, Florida right now. Look at that tremendous lift, great loft and reach. He gets the ball down the lane so well, Jay. He follows through so well to his target. There's a good profile, the shoulder's directly over the knee. And Hanley is going to face the 4-9 split. Bob, last week, this week, nothing has gone right. He's bowled so well to make the telecast. He's made good shots this week so far, Jay. Just nothing going for him. Four pin, ten pin, now the four nine. Tough spare. He'll go down the left side of the lane with a lot of ball speed. Try to slide the four into the nine. Oh. <laughs> what a great try. And in spite of his troubles last week with spares, he is a, a very good spare shooter, as evident by this shot here, when he almost slid the four into the nine. And, and you're looking at something that's over 60 feet away, and he has a target about the size of an eighth of an inch to hit, to make that spare. His best year on tour came in 85, when he earned over $87,000. He's going to go over the $60,000 mark today for 1989. It's a good day for a lot of other reasons for him, though, Jay. This is his sixth wedding anniversary. Oh, that's now, isn't that nice? And so we can say happy anniversary to his wife, Mary Ellen, who I'm sure is watching. She's also a professional bowler. And Bob says he's never been home for their anniversary in six years. 
10, 300 games. This year, none but. He's got a chance for one right now. That's six in a row for Brian Voss. Halfway home. This large, noisy, knowledgeable crowd loving the action of this Touring Players Championship. His bride-to-be. Oh, my. He was in deep trouble there for a second. He was. <laughs> that was a great run, though, Jay. Six in a row to start the match, and uh, he's really got... At this point, Bob Hanley is really in a deep hole. Here's his reaction. He thought he'd made a good shot. The ball jumped uh, a little bit on the back end, and he's happy with the results. <laughs> yeah, okay. He said, I'll, I'll settle for that 4-7 down there. Mm -hmm. Oh, my! <laughs> oh, ho, ho. Think it's not a game of inches, boys and girls? There you go. <laughs> and that's, that's almost embarrassing. Brian Voss. Has a big lead, 62 pins. It comes with a surprise. So where's the surprise? In a minute. First, this baby picks up stuff like nails and glass. And like a regular shop vacuum, it also picks up water. So where's the surprise? Just watch. You twist the top, lift it off, and you've got a surprisingly powerful blow-up. And now ShopVac puts its power to work cleaning carpet stains with Spot Check. It turns any ShopVac into a powerful carpet cleaner. ShopVac. If it doesn't say ShopVac, keep shopping. Oh, honey, don't come near me, please. Oh, I can't. No, it's not a good idea. Oh, no, no, baby, don't, you know, not, 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 not right now. Oh, sweetie. You don't want to get too close. Fight morning breath with Scope. Scope has two powerful ingredients to kill 90% of the bacteria that cause morning breath. Kiss me. What are you waiting for? Great kiss. You may kiss me now. Scope, the best thing first thing in the morning. The Bengals, the Browns, and the Dog Pound. Then, Elway, and Bo. The Broncos battle the Raiders, an NBC football doubleheader, Sunday. The commissioner of the PBA here from his hometown, Akron, Ohio, Mr. Joe Antonora. And we want to thank everybody of course, on the PBA Tour for all their help. Kevin Shippey, Mike Sands, and Bobby Dinkins from the press office, and of course, Harry Golden, the tournament director. Hanley deep in a hole and trying to get back in business, but leaves a 10-pin. It just hasn't been, uh, even though he's bowled, like I mentioned, so well to make the top five two weeks in a row. He just cannot get a break when the cameras are on, Jay, for some reason. He's making great shots this, this particular match. Just cannot carry the corners. Four pins, ten pins, the four nine. Bob was telling me that his hand is extremely sore. Uh, he's made three consecutive top 24s. Uh, this long format of 56 games with almost the one that did him in, Jay. This is the third consecutive week that he's had to bowl all these games of match play and qualifying, and you can see his hand is all patched up. <laughs> he looks like the walking wounded out there, but he said he's very happy to be here. This is where the money is. So he can live with the pain and get that check. A strike on 39 for Handley in the eighth frame. Lead is still 62 for Voss. 
Because look, you see how he tucks that elbow way inside? That's so he doesn't overturn the ball. That keeps his elbow going through the center of the ball, which all the crankers want to do. They want to keep their elbow going straight through the middle of the ball. Ball striking back in the eighth. And Brian is going to get a shot at the big prize. $27,000 the champion here and Leto Monticelli has had a big week here he, he has really has been in the driver's seat it's almost run away with the with the first the qualifying spot the normal adjustment Jay right there you see it it's typical the great players tend to do this almost every time you can almost forecast it last time on this lane he was high he left the 4-7 comes back over to the lane even though and it's automatic. He makes an adjustment. Even though he may not want to, it's going to happen. He changes speed, he changes rotation, gets the ball farther down the lane, leaves the bucket. And it's, it's you know, it just happens almost every time. He picks up the 2 4 5 eight. Right, Bob Hanley in the ninth. Chance for a maximum score of 216 if you were to strike through the ninth and tenth. Brian Voss going at it again, a 248 pace. And Lay with the strike in the ninth. And Lee came from 10th position after five rounds of play. Start the tenth. Here's a good look at the power again of Bob Hanley's bowling ball. Watch the five pin go over to the seven. The head pin comes off the wall all the way across. Take out the ten. That's what the players call sending a scout across there. Uh, take out that corner pin, even though you wouldn't have got it with the original hit. It's a live ball. Great pin action. Boy, he is finishing it off in fine fashion. Right now, he'd Making like to start the most over. Of it. Yeah, he he'd would like, like to start over, wouldn't he? Look at, look at it, Boss saying the same thing. Bob's proud of his alma mater, Pittsburgh, Kansas State. Yeah, well, Bob, a couple of weeks ago, they've been ranked number one in the Division II college football ranks. Bob said he was going to bowl a lot better this week than he did last week. And he's and proven he it, Jay. Yes, sir. You have to be proud of the way he came back this week in a 216 total. Well, that was Bob Hanley. Last week wasn't the real Bob Hanley. This week was. Voss with a strike. And that's almost what you might call the unreal Brian Voss. This guy just gets better, and it, it gets to the point where you don't think he can get any better, and he just continues to improve. He's such a dominant player. It's unbelievable, and, and it's so much fun to watch him play, Jay. scorecard what might have been here for boss huh <laughs> he came close to getting that 300 game which has eluded him this year the four pin stays up a 257 for boss boss will go up against monticelli right after this from your local station on the true story of one man's fight for justice in New York's notorious murder case. Daniel J. Travanti. We gotta find out the truth. Howard Beach making the case for murder. Mr. Scrooge has been seeing more ghosts than usual this year. They are after the news. Stuffing. Stuffing. It's the five-piece holiday meal deal from Kentucky Fried Chicken with two buttermilk biscuits and that delicious new stuffing for just $4.99. It's meant for two. More ghosts? We've got a 10 piece holiday meal with four buttermilk biscuits and more stuffing for just $9.99. You have money up there? 
Get the five or ten piece holiday meal deal at Kentucky Fried Chicken today. It took 2,000 years, but a revolutionary discovery is changing the way men think about coloring their gray hair. It's called Just for Men, from the leader in men's hair coloring. Simply apply Just for Men, and in five minutes, shampoo out. Your gray is blended away, leaving your natural looking color. Five minutes. Here, look at me. Just for Men leaves your hair looking healthy and fuller, and it won't fade or wash out. Just for Men, in the men's hair care section. Steve Bell and Beverly Williams, weeknights at 6 and 11 on Eyewitness News. The top 24 finishers this week, study Dave Arnold coming in 24th. And a four-time titleist, Hugh Miller, was in the number 22 spot. Left-handers had a pretty good week this week, Jay. And there's Jack Jurek, uh, one of the young players coming back and bowling well. Mike Albee, who is, as you mentioned, in his quest for that $300,000 mark, just a few thousand short now. George Branham III doing well this week. Jeff Bellinger. Very popular, Jeff Bellinger. Everybody likes Jeff. He's a just a great guy. Buddy from St. Louis. Leroy Bornhop picked up $3,200. Don Gianello, smoothie. Very smooth, very accurate player. Very consistent. Pete Weber had them rolling in here last night. They were yelling and screaming as he tried to get into the top five. He's always a threat, Jay. He's a great player. Jess Stayrook he suffered a 182 game in the position round to miss the telecast by three pins. Coming up, the championship match is always uninterrupted here on NBC. Boss and Monticelli. Now, at a pro shop near you, Brunswick is delivering a 100% uh -huh. urethane monster. What? We're delivering the power of a rhino. The hardest charging ball in America. With five distinct formulations, Brunswick's Rhino reigns. Uh, janitor, to the pro shop, please. Uh oh. <laughs> I bet I get you there. You have heartburn with headache, right? Yeah. Oh, boy, that's great. I have the perfect remedy. It's fast and nothing's more effective. Alka-Seltzer. New advanced formula Alka-Seltzer. Nah, I can't take Alka-Seltzer. This one's easy to take. It has 75% less sodium, a fresh lemony taste, and you can take it with just a little water. How was it? Great, but it's not Alka-Seltzer. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. It is. Oh, yes, it is. Don't no, you it feel is. better? Yes, but it's not Alka-Seltzer. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. 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 Yes, it is. New advanced formula. It is. Believe it or not, it's Alka-Seltzer. Oh, it is. The game's high rollers. America's top bowlers. In a high-stakes showdown. Lisa Wagner. Mark Roth. Marshall Holman. And the winner of a nationwide competition. A unique roll-off where the stakes go up as the pins go down. The Bowling Shootout. Only on NBC Sports World. Boss and Monticelli. Top prize, $27,000. Amletto, 5'8", 150, as Earl likes to say, ringing wet and with his bowling ball. <laughs> A young man from Venezuela, his 10th championship round appearance of this year. 215.4 the average this week. And hurry. Came up a little short. I want to remind our listeners that they can register to compete in the Budweiser National Bowling Hall of Fame Tournament. League bowlers in the U.S. and Canada compete in a most pins over average qualifying at local centers through March 15th. The regional winners will earn expense paid trips to the stepladder finals in St. Louis May 21st through the 24th. That's the
registration that is underway now for the Budweiser National Bowling Hall of Fame Tournament. Registration fee is a dollar, and the proceeds benefit the National Bowling Hall of Fame and Museum. And uh, we hope many of you will have the opportunity to participate in that. It's a tremendous event. leaves a 10. Brian was a little deeper, more, in other words, more toward the center of the lane with that shot. And I don't know if that was an intentional adjustment or if he just let one get away from him a little bit there. But the ball, by being more toward the center of the lane, didn't have quite as much drive when it got to the pin area, and he left that flat 10. Lane 40 has given the players trouble carrying the 10 pin. This is the one they wanted to re-rack several times. Exclusive uninterrupted coverage of the championship match. And as we conclude the PBA's televised coverage of tournament activity in the 80s, uh, been a recent survey, Earl, of the touring pros, and uh, they found these accomplishments on the tour to be most significant. Uh, I think Albee's record earnings this year, Pete McCordick's 300 game in 87, Earl Anthony becoming the first PBA player to top a million in his career. Those were just some of the highlights, of course, of the decade. Oh, boss is in trouble. Four, six, seven, ten. Brian looks a little confused. Now, a lot of times, something, here's a good look at that shot, and you can see the ball is starting to hook too early right there. Breaks very sharply. And what they call the Greek church, the four, six, seven, ten. The big four. And a lot of bad names for that one. <laughs> but Brian seems like he's uh, after, as I was going to say, a lot of times the players, when they wait between matches and they don't throw practice balls, as Brian wasn't allowed to practice on the TV pair, obviously, waiting for the next match, he gets confused. He loses his concentration. He loses his, uh, his ability to make those real crisp, good shots. Monticelli. With the strike, high match play block this week, 1886. Now here, as opposed to Brian Voss, I, you've heard me say how great his style is. Look at this style. This is what you don't want to do. This is not the way to throw a bowling ball. Monticelli is very unique in his ability to make this work. It works for him. Don't try to copy this style. Believe me. He missed the first three events of the fall tour because of a leg injury that uh, happened to him on a bicycle. And, uh, his high game this week, 278, 236 average on the TV pair. Hooks it in there for the strike. Monticelli with the early lead, eight years on tour, 28 years of age. He's won over 86,000 in his career. He can go over, or 86,000 last year, and he can go over. 290,000 in here today as Boss leaves the 10 again. That was a little tentative shot there. Now, Brian is still not lined up. Now he's going to go cross lane very hard. Good ball speed at the 10. I'm watching Brian, and I'm trying to figure out what's going on in his mind, Jay. I'm looking at him, and I can see that he's thinking. He's trying to figure out, is, have the lanes changed, or am I not throwing the ball the same way I did the last two games? And I think, eventually, he's going to figure out that he isn't making the same shots he was making in the two previous games. The lanes haven't changed very much. It's up to Brian to get back into that rhythm, that ball speed, and that release he had in the first two games. Reigning PBA Player of the Year. Won that award, the most lopsided voting ever last year. That's got to hurry. Hmm. Well, he is uh, a little frustrated all of a sudden. He had such a wonderful run. He's missed the pocket more this game already in four frames than he missed it the first two games together. So you can see that, uh, you know, he's missed it twice already, and that's <laughs> just not the way Brian was bowling the first two matches. Eight strikes. And okay. nine strikes in those matches, and a 252.5 average. Tough spare. Gets the spare, but uh, he doesn't have a strike yet, and was open in the second frame. And 
Monticelli, who qualified first, has a 30-pin lead. And he's looking at that rack. He just had a re-rack there. In other words, he had the pins re-spotted. This is the one all the players have done that with, Jay. They've left that weak 10-pin a lot of times and a couple of 8-10s on this lane. Bingo. Earlier this year, Monticelli rolled his seventh perfect game of the season. That sets a PBA record. And you might wonder whose record he broke. Guppy Troops. See that rotation there? That tremendous wrist action. People think you lift the ball with your fingers. Your fingers and thumb guide the ball. Your strength in your wrist, the bigger muscles are what create that tremendous lift that he gets there. Earl, the folks at home may be wondering why you say don't copy Monticelli's style because they see those three strikes in a row there. <laughs> like I say, he's unique. He's the only player, the only guy I know of that can bowl like this and be consistent. It's a very unique style, difficult to do, to be these shots time after time. It's very hard to do. Keep it simple. Make the game as simple as possible, and it's uh, it's a lot easier to play. There's no sense putting things into your game that make it difficult to repeat. And here's a good look at how powerful his ball is. It comes out almost near the channel, all the way back. Gets that good pin action with the head pin coming off the kickback. So he takes a left turn down there, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> That's his reaction. Still plenty of time, and it's the championship match. Strike on 40 for Voss. After a re-rack. But he's got a long way to go to get the lead over that man. Now that watch the balance. The style of Brian Voss, the good balance at the foul line, the shoulders extended out over the knee. And there's the reaction he was looking for in the first five frames. Finally got it here in the fifth frame. Now let's see if he can repeat it on lane 39 where he has missed the pocket twice. Split and a bucket. Well, now he thinks maybe he's got it back online. Now we have a match. Even though Monticelli at this point has a 40-pin lead, this is only the sixth frame for Amleto, and anything can happen. Brian gets lined up, as you've already seen. He can throw a lot of strikes, but so can this young man. Amleto Monticelli on the approach, sixth frame. Is he, Jay? No, indeed. After getting the spare in the first, he strung five together. This is the Turing Players Championship, and what that means is only players that are out full-time on the tour and have bowled at least half the tournaments this year or were a Turing player last year are eligible for this tournament. That's why, as you mentioned earlier, there were only about 95 or 100 players entered. What was it, 100, Jay? That's right as opposed to a normal field of 160. That was a bit high. 3-6-10 lead for Monticelli. This tournament, as we said, uh, kind of put a major around it in quotes because the, the touring players feel it's a major. It is their tournament. It's a title that is valued very greatly by the player. It is. You're right, Jay. And uh, one of the key things, obviously, is that three-year Firestone exemption. The, the, that's the the Firestone. I keep saying the Firestone. What that really is, the Turing players uh, get. If you win this tournament, you're in, in there with the guys that are bowling for the the biggest event of the year, you might say, Jay. It's the crown jewel in the PBA Tour, the Tournament of Champions. Well, Boss has been able to battle back. Monticelli open in the seventh. Boss down 35. Trying to make it three in a row. Yes! And he's definitely back in the match now, Jay. It's anybody's ball game. He can strike, strike here in the eighth frame coming up on his tough lane. If he can strike here, it's only a 15-pin game. And he'll be by his tough lane with only the tenth frame to play on it. I want to take just a moment to thank all of our friends at Bud Sports, Andy Davenport and his grand group, and of course, the man who's come on board and done a splendid job of producing PBA Fall Tour, Jeff Himes. What a joy it's been working with all those folks again this year. Oh, boss. He's rolling again. 
after a very rugged start. Four in a row for Voss. And this is a key shot for him. Like I say, he only has to bowl on this lane once more and watch the reaction of Brian here when he, he, he just knows he's rolled this ball tremendously well. Here's his reaction. And now back live. Camletto's lead has been cut to 15. He responds with a strike in the eighth. What a great match we have here, Jay. Mm -hmm. Two fine players, two maybe of the two of the top, at least top ten on the tour uh, for the Turing Players Championship. And Leto led this tournament by a huge margin. Brian Voss, very aggressive, wants to win this year before the fall tour ends. It's the last tournament of the year. is standing and it was a great shot uh, he previous shot on this lane the ball went high for him he gave it a little more room watch how far down the lane this ball goes and how close to the channel before it grips right there turns in it's behind the head pin you see that it's called a ringing 10 the ball the six pin goes up and over the 10 pin He was 60 pins behind yeah, at one point. Has risen to a position where he can still win it. He can. He has his fate in his own hands, Jay. If he strikes in the ninth, tenth, and eleventh frames, he's a winner. Seven pin. All right. It's anybody's match. It's going to come down to the tenth frame. And well, it should. Yeah, well, it should. Uh -huh. For the Turing Players Championship, it well should. Watch the pin action. Watch the head pin come out and doesn't quite get the seven pin. Brian will carry that hit nine out of ten times. Not this time. All right, here we are now. Tenth frame, Brian Boss on his tough lane, the one he's had trouble lining up on. If he strikes out, he can shoot a score of 219. Monticelli is going at a 225 pace. So Brian must strike out with any pressure at all on Monticelli. Still alive. What an outstanding performance by these two and uh, superb field that started this action here in Taylor, Michigan. Troop. Baker and Handling and Boss and Monticelli battling in this $150,000 Budweiser Touring Players Championship. Oh, it didn't go. It didn't go. <laughs> and Brian really didn't expect it to. You can see the smile on his face. Uh, he, he felt he made a pretty good shot there. The problem was he needed that strike to make Monticelli get any kind of a mark. Watch the head pin go to the side. Comes all the way across. Not quite enough to get the score of 209 for Brian Voss. Monticelli with any kind of a mark, even decent count, is going to be the champion. Here's another look at that head pin rolling across. Just nudges the 10, but not quite enough to make it fall. young man works out every morning for an hour and a half keeps himself in great shape there's his bride Amleto Monticelli the touring players championship and he's going to go over a hundred and ninety three thousand on the year Earl. move into second on the money list this year uh, if that's a great year and here's a guy that, like I said don't copy this style folks it only works for him but he's a great player a superb athlete Jay
second week in a row. Voss finishes second. Voss will take down 8,500 or uh, 14,000 for second place. Still a nice week's pay, Jay. Yes, sir. And what a great way for Amleto to finish the year. I believe this is his third victory of the year. He's had a wonderful year. He's worked his way up. He's paid his dues. And now he's considered one of the top players on the PBA Tour. What a wonderful way for this young champion to finish it off. The man from Venezuela and his bride, Teresa. Monticelli wins the Touring Players Championship. Back to hand out the presents in just a moment. Don't worry. They're going to love you. Staying cool. Trying to impress. Making points. When you put two Refreshing, the one and only taste of the king of beers. The king of beers. the latest light-duty truck customer satisfaction ratings, some people weren't at all surprised. How does Forerunner rate in customer satisfaction? Toyota's number one. Toyota vans? Number one. Toyota Land Cruiser? Number one. Toyota pickups? Number one. Proving what we do for you, we do better than anyone else. I love what you do. men. Hit it, boys! Isn't there someone you know who could use a skill Whoa. twist this Christmas? The skill twist. The practical gift for practically anybody. When the Browns face the Bingos, it's another example of football fever in Ohio. Join the O.J. Simpson to find out about it Sunday on NFL Live. This has been the PBA Fall Tour, and today it was brought to you by your Toyota dealers and their quality line of cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. By Budweiser, Beechwood aged for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. By Brunswick, proud sponsor of Team USA. And by Alka-Seltzer Advanced Formula. Believe it or not, it's Alka-Seltzer. Amleto Monticelli is the champion. John Conti, the Budweiser Michigan Division Manager, presenting the trophy. And Adeline DeBiase, the proprietor of the Taylor Lanes, presenting the check to the champion. What a wonderful win. And Amleto's wife, Teresa, there, along with Earl Anthony. The Touring Players Championship. And remember, next Saturday, the bowling shootout will come your way here on NBC at 4 Eastern Time. Time, that should be something special. And coming up next, except on the West Coast, it's Sports World. For Earl Anthony and all the gang, so long from the Taylor Lanes in Taylor, Michigan. This has been a presentation of Bud Sports and the PBA Incorporated in association.